so many people are fearful of imposter syndrome, fear of failure, fear of success, something that a lot of people overthink. But man, like, are you really gonna let that stop you from helping people? Because people need your gift. But so many people just don't have the belief that they have a gift. And it's so cool, like, uh, helping your friend, even just the belief in itself transmutes all of that, that energy. How, how big of a role does belief play? Belief is everything. Yeah, belief is everything. You know, that's, you know, a big premise around my book, Program to Fail, is that most of us are not aware of our beliefs. And many of them work for us to our advantage, you know, especially with mm-hmm. the, a lot of the people that I'm working with. It's like, well, you don't get into the NFL or MLB being 100% programmed to fail. You're mostly programmed to succeed. but there are ways in which you're being programmed. You have been programmed to fail through some of your beliefs that you picked up unconsciously. And so those are the things that, you know, you stub your toe on or that trigger you emotionally or create a breakdown in performance when the stress levels get too high. And so in any given moment, the reality that you're creating is just a byproduct of what you believe to be true because, you know, our brain is constantly scanning the information around us and deleting and distorting and generalizing the information to make it true for us and to perpetuate that reality that the identity wants to see us live in. And so if, you know, I talk about it, I'm like, well, really, like, there's adulthood, right? Like, you leave your parents' house and you're out on your own and trying to make your way. But the really next level of adulthood is going back and analyzing all of your beliefs because as a child you took on all your parents and your community beliefs and like you could be frozen as a kid in many ways in those beliefs unless you go back and you analyze them and you ask yourself well and this is kind of how i have people do it this framework to get some clarity around like how do you even uncover what your beliefs are well you take inventory of your life you know let's say you're 25 years old 30 35 you do this at any age but you ask yourself okay what stores would I give these different aspects of life? You know, and just being real with yourself, like my mental health and well-being, like how does it feel to be me every day? You know, one to 10, give yourself a score. Where am I at with my physical health? One to 10, give yourself a score. My satisfaction with my career, you know, what I'm doing for work, one to 10, give yourself a score. Finances, relationships, I break that into a few different buckets from your work relationships to the people who, you know, you're, you're working with and a lot of that relationship is based upon what you can do for them or others and then your tribe which is more about who you are rather than what you can do and then your romantic mm-hmm. relationship and just analyze it and see like is there an area in your life or multiple areas where you give yourself a really low score bingo that's where you've been programmed to fail that's where you want to put your energy and start to uncover okay well what are my emotions that come up when i start to even feel in the area right maybe it's an issue with money and you're just like, oh, I'm always anxious. I'm always worried about, I'm always worried about money. It's not enough money. It's not enough money. Okay. Let's well, deal into that. Go into the fear. Allow that to come up. Allow yourself to sit into that. Because again, we talked about somatically is where these beliefs live in the physical body. You'll find that fear in the solar plexus area most of the time. So you sit right in the middle of it and you ask yourself, what am I believing to be true about money or about my situation right now financially that make me feel so afraid? And if you sit deep into that, there's going to be a bubbling up of what that belief is. And then once you bring it to awareness, you know, then you can start to move through the process of accepting it, surrendering it to the past, and then alchemizing, choosing the opposite belief to move forward with. And I have a lot of techniques, especially in the book, I talk about like how do we integrate that, how do we make it stick. It's one of those things that whether, and I'm glad that you brought up the financial aspect because I think it's so timely for the work that you do. Whether you have a little bit of money or you have a lot of money, you're going to have anxiety around money for most people. You're going to be afraid of losing it or you're going to be afraid of not making it. Same thing goes for success. I think a lot of people are, they're always looking for it, searching for it, hoping that there'll be enough once they get it. Not recognizing that once they get it, then there's the the fear of success uh, on top of that, all the things that are going to come on, uh, come with that, all of the extra effort that you have to put in. Do I really want this? What about the judgment of others? Like there's so many things that we don't really think about. Do you notice in the people that you work with, fear of success is probably more common than a fear of failure? Yeah, at the highest level, um, 
it can definitely come to fruition. You know, one story comes to mind in particular. Uh, I was working with a uh, first round draft pick and, you know, he got this $30 million signing bonus and I was working with him in his second season and he just wasn't showing up as the best version of himself. He wasn't mm-hmm. doing the work to actually be as good as he could be. And what we uncovered was subconsciously he was believing that the more success he'd have, the more judgment he would get from the fans, from the media, from coaching staff, from management, from teammates. And so he was basically making the inference that more success equals more suffering. And so, in other words, like, he was afraid to succeed more, right? And so that fear of more success was being driven by the belief that, well, all this judgment, this negative judgment in particular, is going to come from more success because, of course, the more success you have, the bigger the stage gets, the more eyeballs get on you, the more expectations grow. And so we had to move him through that, and we had to have him fully go into that. He never would have come to that, you know, just on his own. We had to go deep, deep, deep into, into his body for this all to start bubbling up because if anyone would have asked him, hey, what's going on with you? He'd be like, oh, you know, man, I'm just not motivated. That's what a lot of people say. Oh, I just don't have the motivation. I need more motivation. It's like, that's not it. Because what you really want is inspiration. Inspiration is limitless. It flows like, you know, a limitless river. It just keeps flowing and flowing and flowing. Uh, you feel like you need to force it with motivation when you have a blockage. Right? So I think there's a real misconception around motivation and inspiration. Motivation is more like, how do I find it outside of me? Inspiration is limitless and it flows from inside of you. And so that inspiration was unlocked as soon as we reprogrammed the police for him. And now he's absolutely crushing it the last couple of seasons. Um, he's been an animal and he's one of the best players on the team. And he definitely has earned his contract.